So what exactly the structure initialization? Structure is a group of different data types. If I want to create any structure, it is very important that I should start with the keyword struct. Member type in the sense what? The data type. So member name in the sense the variable that you are trying to create. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the wonderful session. It's all about the structures. Yes, my dear students, this is going to be the first topic in the unit number four. What exactly the structure is all about? So how do I use this structure? What is the use of this structure? Is what I will be discussing in this session with all of you. Stay tuned, I'm Kaushik, lecturer in the Department of Computer Science with the Ashram First Grade College. So what is that I have in this session? Let's have a quick look with the agenda. What is the first topic that I have? So guys, I will be speaking with respect to definition and declaration of structure. Then followed by, I will also speak about the assigning the members of structure. So then the followed by, so what exactly the structure initialization and also I will be speaking about the structure elements in memory. So this is what I will be discussing in the session. Quickly get into the topic. So guys, what exactly the structure is all about? So you all know that we have discussed the concept called data types. When I speak about the data type, the first thing it comes to our mind is all about the fundamental data types in that we have discussed, we have seen. So int, float, character. So all these things comes to our mind. What exactly all these things is all about? So all these things, I will call it as a fundamental data types. So please don't forget that. Yes. When I have the fundamental data types, it is very important that for me to use how exactly it is defined. So that's why I will call it as a predefined data types. So it is already defined. You just have to use it. But I have a problem when I'm coding, when I'm writing my program, I need the flexibility. I want to create my own data type. So then how do I do it? So yes. In this programming language, especially in the computer science, that is C programming language. So my dear students, you have the privilege to create your own data type. So with the help of the concept called structures. So that is the most important point that you need to remember. Yes, structure will help me to create my own data type. How do I create it? So what exactly basically the structure is all about is what we are trying to understand. Basically, the structure is a group of different data types. So that's what I will call it as a structure. I repeat my definition to all of you. Structure is a group of different data types. So it is grouped with the help of one single name. So that's what you need to understand. Sir, what exactly is this? Are you speaking about? Yes, let's understand practically how exactly it looks like. So my dear students, if I want to create any structure, it is very important that I should start with the keyword struct. This is the first important point that you should remember. I always start with the keyword struct to create the structure. So fine, followed by, what is that I have? So followed by, I should have the name of the structure. Sir, how do I give the name for the structure? It is very important that you should remember here also, we follow the rules of identifiers. So kind, whatever the name that you want, you can choose. But whenever you are choosing the name for the structure, the name should speak what exactly you are doing with that structure. So fine, you understood that we have a keyword that is struct and we are giving the name for the structure followed by you will use the open flower bracket. Followed by you will give the open flower bracket. Then after that, so please observe, so I have something here. This is what you need to understand. It's very important. The first one that you need to understand is member type and the member name. What exactly I'm speaking about? What is this member type and member name? So please observe this. I have this member type, member name, member type, member name, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've given like that. So please observe. Member type one, member name one. Member type two, member name, member name two. So member type three, member name three. So it goes on till n. What exactly is this? So please observe what exactly is this in this example. Guys, member type in the sense data type. Member type in the sense what? The data type. So member name in the sense the variable that you are trying to create. That's what I will call it as a member name. 
So that is what you need to remember. So what are the most important thing that you need to observe here is, so I have different types. Say I have int, okay, and I have character. One structure can hold multiple data types is what you need to remember. So fine. So let's go back to the syntax. So fine, you understood. I have to mention the data type and then I have to write the variable name. That's what they have given like this. So fine. After giving whatever the variables, whatever uh, the variables that you wanted to have in the, inside the structure, so you will mention it here, then followed by you will use the closing flower bracket. After that, so you will be writing the structure variable, that's very important. Structure variable and then followed by semicolon. So this is the general syntax that you need to remember if you want to create any structure. So fine, sir, how exactly I will be using it. So let's take an example. How do I create a structure? So look at the example that I have here. So I told you, obviously you should start with a keyword called struct. So fine, I'm starting with a keyword called struct. So the second thing that I have is books. Books is what? Books is the name of the structure that I'm using. Then followed by I have the open flower bracket. So please observe here. So fine, inside that I have created the variables. Inside that I have created the variables. So please observe. So I have the data type that is char. So I'm creating an array of type character. So the name of the array is title. The name of the array is title. So what is the size that you have given? This is the size of the array. So that is 50. So fine, this is one. Okay, this is one variable that you have created of type character. The same way I have created the author, the same way I have created the subject. So after that, I have uh, one more variable. So please observe that is with respect to the integer data type. So what is the name of the variable? I have book ID of type int. According to the definition of the structure, the structure can hold different data types. Yes, am I holding the different data types? Yes you are holding the different data types with one name that is books. So fine, now you should treat this books as one data type. You should treat this books as one data type. So fine, I understood. So I'm writing this books, books is one data type. So imagine I have int, so and I have a. What is this? Int is a data type. What is this? A, a is a variable. So a is a variable of type int. So please observe. I have the book. So for, suppose if I write b1, okay, b1 is a variable of type books. So what is books now? So books is a user defined data type. I can call the structure as a user defined data type. That's what you need to understand. It's uh, very simple. You need to remember this. So books is a user defined data type, but when it comes to int, it is predefined data type. So A is a variable of type int and B1 is a variable of type books. The same way, what is that I'm creating here? Book is a variable of type books. That's what you need to remember. Fine, this is the basic knowledge that you should have with respect to the structure. Moving forward, how do I uh, access, how do I access the variables, whatever I have in the book? So that's what uh, we are trying to understand here in this topic. Accessing the members of a structure. So I will call all these things as a members. So how do I access this? So let's try and check. So what does that I have to do? So please understand, I need to print, uh, I need to print uh, the book name. Okay, that's what I will call it as a title. Okay, how do I access that? So that's what you need to remember here. Guys, how do I access the elements that I have here? So it's very important that you need to remember. I use a dot operator to access any of the members of the structure. That's very important that you need to understand here. Say for example, I need to access uh, these uh, elements, these members, author, title, subject, no books, ID. How do I access it? With the help of the variable, with the help of the variable. So please understand what are the variable that I've created? So that is book, okay? So what is that I've created? That is book. So please understand. So variable name is book, okay? Book dot, so title. What is that I will write? Book dot title. In the same way, if I want to access the author, how do I access? Book dot author, okay? So this is how you will access. You will use the variable as well as dot, okay? Dot operator. So that's what you need to remember when you want to access a particular member of the structure. That's very important that you need to understand here.
So fine. So what is that I have done here? So please check out. So we have given book title and present book dot title. So same way book dot author, book dot subject and book dot book ID. So this gives me the particular information with respect to the different members that I have in the structure. So fine. Moving forward. So guys, when it comes to initialization, how do I initialize the value to a particular individual member of the structure? So how do I initialize it? When it comes to initialization, I have two ways. In two ways, I can initialize the values. The first way or the first method that I can initialize is it's a very simple method. So please observe what I have here. So I have the structure and I've created a structure called employee. So inside this employee, I have created two variables that is employee code of type int and then employee salary of type float. So that's what you need to remember. I repeat. So I have the second variable that is employee salary of type float. So fine. I'm closing the structure here. You can observe here. I have the flower bracket with a semicolon. Then now it's very important that you need to observe this line. So what is that? I'm writing. I'm writing the employee. Employee in the sense name of the structure. So fine. I've written the name of the structure. Then EMP1. EMP1 in the sense you are creating the object for this employee so fine after that so i'm writing the assignment operator i'm opening the flare brackets that's what you need to observe here so fine so what is the first value that you have you have 100 the first value goes to this employee code and the second value goes to the second variable that is employee salary this is the first method that we can initialize the value to the members that i have in the structure i have one more method so let me show you that so how exactly we are initializing it? So as I told you in the previous example, so please observe, I have the same structure and I have created the variable that is EMP1, okay? So what is the variable name that you have? EMP1, okay? EMP1 dot, so I will write employee code. I will write employee code is equal to 100. And also I will write EMP1 dot EMP salary is equal to 8980.00, all right? So this is the second way of initializing the values to the members that I have in the structure. This is what you need to remember with respect to this. So fine, this is all about the basic concepts that you should remember with respect to the structure by saying this. So I will sign off for the day. So my dear students, so for more information on structure, please watch my next session. Thank you very much.